The chance for tropical development in the Gulf this week. Meanwhile, the main development region of the Atlantic likely to heat up as we look ahead towards August. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this wonderful Wednesday, and hopefully we're having an all right hump day out there, or I guess uh, hump evening, if you will, by the point uh, that this video is coming out. But uh, a couple things to talk about today. We've got uh, tropical trouble in the Gulf potentially brewing, and we'll talk about the chances of that, but also the chances of uh, more classical development out towards the main development region of the Atlantic as we start looking ahead towards that first week of August. And speaking of the first week of August, major changes in the pattern over the lower 48 between now and then as well, with a bit of a roller coaster setting up for many of us. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications so you're up to date with the always changing models and my analysis of those models. Uh, so we can all kind of stay locked in here towards the core of hurricane season that is right around the corner. All right, let's start focusing here with our satellite imagery like we normally do on the channel. And we'll start with water vapor loop uh, doing a pretty good job at showing where the atmosphere is moving certain systems and where it's taking them. And uh, we've got a couple areas that probably jump out to you on the map. One area uh, here over the Gulf. Yeah, like we've been mentioning, increasing moisture content over this part of the country. Uh, also seeing a little bit of spin out there, some spinach as we uh, might call it this time of year, indicating that we do have some cyclonic rotation. The question is, will that turn into anything? That's what we'll try to answer uh, here coming up in just a bit. Now, outside of that, notice a big plume of moisture now coming off of Africa. I've been telling you uh, that uh, this is kind of getting ready to get... Um uh, we'll call it moistened up a little bit out here as more waves start rolling off of Africa. The more they do, the more it starts eating away at some of that drier air up here to the north and uh, definitely beginning to see that moisture field starting to look a little bit more like it should this time of year as it starts to eat away at some of that dry air. Also relatively moist out here into the Caribbean, but definitely pockets of dry air one of those pockets of dry air over the mid-Atlantic right now where we've had a beautiful Wednesday for a lot of us, although hot, definitely not nearly as muggy as it has been, which we will absolutely take. Now, we're going to start today with this system in the Gulf. What are the odds it develops into something? Well, uh, I'll tell you, not overly high right now. The National Hurricane Center giving it a low-end chance of development, uh, but you can definitely see the rainfall associated with it. Pretty widespread thunderstorm action from South Georgia through Florida, uh, back in Alabama and Mississippi, seeing plenty of afternoon thunderstorms today and all of that going to move over this section that could potentially try to develop into that D name storm, which would be Dexter. Let's go ahead now and take a look at some model data and see what are the odds that that happens. Sea surface temperatures out here definitely beginning to heat up. In fact, the Gulf, one of the warmest places right now in the Atlantic. Actually, I'll just go ahead and say the warmest place in the Atlantic uh, with water temperatures in the upper 80s, some parts even close to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and that's this section here just south of Louisiana. That's exactly where this energy is going to try to track over over the coming days. Now, outside of that, the main development region also beginning to heat back up, starting to get some warmer waters out here, uh, closer to 80 degrees Fahrenheit into that region. And uh, the Caribbean running a little bit behind, but definitely starting to warm up, especially here uh, in and around Cuba and towards the Yucatan, starting to see those warmer sea surface temperatures. So that's not really a limiting factor uh, anywhere in the Atlantic that you would normally expect development. Sea surface temperatures, at least average for most of us, uh, if not even above average or just slightly below average, like I mentioned there in the Caribbean. Caribbean. But let's dive on into this Gulf area and I'll tell you, uh, definitely dealing with some components that are going to help to keep this at bay, I'd say. Now, as far as moisture, this definitely has a pocket of moisture. Uh, you can see that here in these more greenish, bluish, uh, turquoise-ish colors, whatever you'd like to call it. Uh, definitely that is a pocket of higher end moisture that would promote tropical development. But notice uh, all of the areas that air would be flowing into this thing, basically, there are, you know, regions of drier air that would help to choke out thunderstorm activity. So either way, this is increasing rainfall chances currently across those sections that we mentioned of Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and uh, out towards Florida as well. Uh, and this will try to consolidate south of Louisiana over the coming days. This is by Thursday morning. So tomorrow morning, you start to see that pocket of moisture uh, being a little bit well, uh, more defined, I should say, but still a lot of dry air around it. So that's going to help to keep us, uh, I'd say, in an all right place here dealing with this system. Another thing that's going to help us out are these upper level winds uh, currently. And we'll go ahead and just move ahead towards tomorrow. We're getting a belt of uh, these winds well up into the atmosphere that are blowing. 
uh, kind of southwesterly here, and that's helping to kind of shear the system apart a little bit. So even though we have very warm ocean temperatures out here, I think wind shear combined with dry air are going to really help to kind of limit the potential for this to develop into anything major. You can see that upper level wind shear kind of follows it all the way on its journey towards Texas. Now, even with all that said, does not mean it's impossible to get something to try to form here. This is by Friday uh, on our GFS American model. You can see a little piece of energy out there as it crosses south of Louisiana and towards Texas, uh, starting to become moisture starved, dealing with some upper levels here, but still a lot of sea surface fuel uh, in terms of warm ocean temperatures. And you can see that with that little pocket of vorticity trying to get going there on this model, even then, though not very impressive. I'm not so uh, impressed by it. Uh, the European model also showing that energy here. This is by... Uh, uh, your Friday morning as well, south of Louisiana, even more defined on this model. You could definitely see the cyclonic spin in uh, the lower level. So it tries to get its act together, tries stacking some spin here uh, into the low and the mid and the upper levels, but just uh, ultimately fails to do so in any major way. So to summarize it, uh, increasing rainfall chances into Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, into southern Louisiana, and into the Gulf Coast of Texas. Uh, but the system going to be dealing with dry air and wind shear. So unlikely to form, but cannot rule out a very weak tropical storm or depression out of this thing. Like I said, though, I'm not overly impressed, and I'd be willing to bet that we don't get that D name out of this storm, uh, just at least over the next couple of days. All right, that's that. Let's go ahead and zoom back out and talk about the main development region where things are also starting to heat up and we could see signs of development as we flip the calendar towards August. Precipitable water values on the rise across the main development region, and that's a key component for development this time of year. Uh, like I've been talking about the past couple of days, if you're a returning viewer, you'll know uh, we've been talking about all this dry air out here, and that's been one of the limiting factors for development. Well, uh, like I said, right now we've got an area of higher in moisture starting to roll off of Africa over the Cabo Verde Islands, and that's going to start to pave the way for more of these bigger, more moist waves to roll off of Africa and towards that main development region. So we'll move it ahead into time. Uh, you notice we even get a little piece of uh, moisture to come down out of uh, the North Atlantic, wraps around that Bermuda High. That gets shot down into the main development region, starts to moisten things up, but it's really right into here. This is about a week from now. Uh, notice a big wave of moisture rolling off of Africa and into the main development region, and that could be an area of potential development. It's right there by about 10 days from now. It's that region of energy that's going to start to get towards the islands here, the Antilles, and that's right as we start turning the calendar from uh, July into the month of August. So definitely watching that. Another thing this has going for, and I think other waves will as well as we go later into August, is relaxing wind shear. Red on this map is high levels of wind shear. That means it's unlikely for tropical development. The blue on the map is below average wind shear, suggesting it may be a little bit easier for these tropical systems to try to form. And uh, as we move uh, the time frame ahead here, uh, right now, average to above average wind shear for a lot of the Atlantic, but you'll notice as we get to about 10 days from now, that same area of moisture has a pocket of average to below average wind shear. So if those two line up, well, that's a recipe for a potential development uh, right into the part of the Atlantic that you don't really want to see it. That's where we get a lot of strong storms Not to say that we will out of this pattern, uh, but definitely a possibility. And the later we go, the further towards August we get, and this is a week into August, definitely a big pocket here of average to below average wind shear starting to take over a big chunk of the Atlantic. And by the middle of the month, the MJO moves through them. That could help to increase rising motion out here. So I think August could be a little bit more active than July. It's not saying a lot considering July was a relatively calm month, but maybe we get a storm or two here uh, in the month of August and we'll watch that really from the beginning and we'll see how things unfold throughout the month. Let's uh, switch on over now and take a look at some ensemble data as well and uh, give you a look at that brand new Google AI model and what it's projecting to happen over the next 10 days. We'll start with the GFS ensembles. This is over the next 10 days, and all things considered, not overly excited with the chance of tropical development. But I want you to notice, as we start getting towards that day 10 time frame, uh, yeah, beginning to see some members out here in the main development region. Only a couple, so not a lot, but uh, you know, starting to move towards the European side of things a little bit, and you'll see that model here next. As for the Gulf, we're not overly excited either with any development. Now, I will mention here, uh, we do have a little bit of maybe a gyre down here towards Central America, or the CAG as a lot of people call it, that looks to maybe try to get going on the European ensemble, or the uh, GFS ensembles rather. Either way, I'm not overly impressed with this set of models. 
Now, the European, you start to notice something really catches your eye right at that 10 day time frame, right where we just talked about potential development right towards the Antilles. Yeah, a lot of these members starting to pick up on something uh, as we look right towards the start of August, a couple members even a little bit stronger, maybe up towards hurricane status. So uh, return back for that. Definitely. We'll see how that evolves over time, but uh, something to keep an eye on this time of year, especially when a reliable source like the European ensembles starts suggesting potential development. Now, what about uh, the good old fashioned Google AI model? This one brand new to the model suite. And uh, let's show it to you. So this is starting right at August 1st. And you can notice another small, but every little dot you see here on the map is an area of potential uh, tropical genesis beginning to form. And as you move this through the first little bit of August, uh, you notice we start to get some members in here and uh, they definitely start to increase. I'll show you the legend there on the side. You can see uh, what the color represents speed wise in terms of winds. Uh, but uh, a lot of a lot of these little members starting to get something. By the time we get 10 to 15 days from now, uh, yeah, we got a pretty big spread here. Uh, this is 12 days from now on uh, the Google AI model. Uh, a lot of members kind of spread out with some sort of energy, whether that be from Central America to the Bahamas, plenty of time to figure it out, but something there for sure showing up in the models that we're going to want to keep an eye on. And obviously I'll have the latest for you every day uh, with these daily videos. So come back definitely for more on the tropics, but let's switch gears, take a look back home and see uh, where the roller coaster of temperatures is on the way. And uh, trust me, it's going to be up and down a lot for many of us. Speaking of that roller coaster, we're going on the up first and then we're going to drop, I think, as we start looking ahead to August for at least a little bit. Uh, heat advisories, heat uh, excessive heat warnings all starting to fill in the map here. Those heat advisories in the orange color, the excessive heat warnings in that more uh, purplish, pinkish color, whatever you'd like to call it here, uh, through the Delta region of the Mississippi Valley. So it's getting hot for sure. We'll just leave it at that. Still seeing storminess up into the plains. And uh, for any viewers up here, I apologize. I've not been focusing a lot on this, but to be completely honest, it's more the same every day. Uh, and I feel like you get bored if I just told you another complex of storms could come at any moment. So that's just what's happening up here. It's more of the same. Uh, and a lot of these areas, you know, uh, only the cows are seeing much of anything. So uh, that's that's uh, my excuse there. But uh, definitely starting to heat back up here into the lower 48. Now, what's on the way? Well, like I said, another heat dome followed by potentially another dip in the jet stream uh, that could return some drier and cooler air well out into the future, but high confidence on that, I'd say, at least given how far it is, uh, relatively high confidence. So here comes the heat dome. Later this week, yeah, we're building back in the orange, back into the eastern U.S., a big dome of heat and humidity returning. So you get the one-two punch. Heat index value is going to be well past 105. I expect a lot of heat advisories and excessive heat warnings over the next week as that builds in uh, into the eastern U.S. And uh, you can see here by early next week, it still is reinforcing it's going to get back uh, to ugly types of weather into the Midwest, the I-95, the Mid-Atlantic, Ohio Valley, basically anyone east of the Mississippi River are going to start to get a, a big heat up by this weekend and into early next week. But notice by a week from now, seven days from now, starting to get to the end of July here, thinking about August, a lot of blue up here into eastern Canada starting to swing on down. So I think the northeast, you're going to go back on the decline for temperatures as well as drier air uh, by the time we look towards the first day or so of August and potentially some signs that that gets all the way through the east and into the southeast and maybe that big or buckling ridge of high pressure and heat shifts off west a little bit and we can get a, a nicer period into the east. It's a possibility and something that some of our models are picking up on. Speaking of that, uh, let's show you those future temperatures and uh, yeah, hot, hot, hot is what it looks like. Uh, you can see here the orange are above average temperatures, the blue below average. Here's by this uh, coming weekend. Let me back it up. Uh, this is this Saturday. Yeah, we're starting to warm up basically anyone from the Rockies all the way to the east. By early next week, downright ugly. Uh, you talk about 15 degrees above average in the peak of summer. That's not good. <laughs> That's not going to feel good. And unfortunately, it's going to be dangerous levels for many of us, I think. Uh, so watch the pets. Make sure you have functioning AC. Check on your neighbors. Uh, anyone with breathing problems. Make sure that you're taking extra precautions. If you work outside, stay hydrated. If you don't work outside, but you've got things you got to do outside, uh, do it early in the morning or late in the evenings when the sun isn't quite as strong and uh, the temperatures are in a nicer phase. But uh, those are brutal temperatures on the way. Trust me, by the time we get into early next week. The good news 
Here's some of that blue showing up, and this is getting within 10 days now. This is the first couple days of August. Uh, signs of relief at that point. Yeah, let's get the fall decorations out. It's August. So let's be done with this. Um, and I'm sure that's what many of us will be hoping for, but I can guarantee you'll still have plenty of hot days in August, and this probably won't even be cold, but a lot better it'll feel than what we're about to go through, which unfortunately is another heat wave. All right, let's show you how much rain's on the way and uh, how that uh, muggy meter is shaping up as we go through the next 10 days or so. As mentioned beforehand, severe weather going to continue to plague the northern plains in this pattern. Uh, you could see, again, I'm going to breeze through this, but uh, all these pockets of colors, that's where we could see severe weather. It's the same folks all over again. It's the same old song. We're going to sing it again. The Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan sound familiar. Yeah, unfortunately, with the way the jet stream is set up, just continuous pockets of storms and potential severe weather rolling through your area over the next seven days. So just have the weather radio ready, have a local meteorologist you trust, tune into your local uh, guy or girl at night uh, that you, you know, trust to give you a reliable forecast and uh, definitely just have a way to get watches in the morning should anything sneak up on you. There's only so much I can do, you know, in terms of that side of things uh, from, you know, all the way in Charlotte with a video that I prepare and then post. Uh, so definitely one of those things you want to go to somebody live and in the moment and checking up every day uh, with your local meteorologist. So watching that and uh, we'll see maybe some storminess could return to the east in that 10 day time frame when we get potentially that big front. And speaking of it, muggy meter. Yeah, right now, some nicer air for a lot of us. Let's just go ahead and spoil the fun. Here's by this weekend, Saturday. Yeah, it's muggy again for basically everyone east of the Rockies. That locks into place through next week until here we go, the start of August. This is about seven to 10 days from now. Notice lower dew points, less muggy air starting to work on in and potentially uh, sweeping through for a lot of us. And this is the ensemble data. So this is a more conservative look at it, honestly, uh, showing low dew points all the way down into portions even of the uh, upper end of the southeast in that longer time frame. So Fingers crossed that'll happen. Let's survive the next seven days or however long this heat wave is going to last. And uh, let's get through these dog days of summer. How about it? All right. How much rain are you going to see? Well, it's, again, uh, the same old song, the Northern Plains, where we've got these complexes of storms going to have the highest in chance of rainfall uh, just about every day here over the next uh, seven to 10 days. This is the next 10 days of rain, I should add. Also, the Gulf region, where we've had these stalled out frontal boundaries, especially over the next couple of days, going to have higher end rainfall chances. Some of that rain working into the Northeast as well. And uh, not uh, no rain, but lower rain chances into the southern Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, and into the southern Apps through the Carolinas and Virginia. Uh, looks to be very hot and muggy with only isolated uh, afternoon storms into that part of the country. All righty, folks, so that's all I got for you on this uh, Wednesday it is. And again, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did and you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit that bell for the latest notifications. Y'all have a great one. Stay safe, and I'll see you all tomorrow.